morning. While preparing for my PowerPoint, I'd like to say that uh, I'll try to make it short, considering that we're already threading a very uh, thin line of sanity. So, um, yeah, so the title of uh, my presentation is about the story of a maritime nation without a maritime doctrine. Uh, if you're familiar to this animated uh, film, Moana, uh, I encountered this actually song uh, featured in, as I mentioned, an animated film, Moana, which talks about the maritime life and the recognition of the importance of the sea. Um, please take a note of the wordings. Um, we set a course to find. I will not sing because you will lose your appetite later on. Uh, <laughs> A brand new island everywhere we roll, and please follow that on the next uh, stand, stands, uh, stanza. We keep our island in our mind, and I highlighted it, and when it, it's time to find home, we know the way. So following Moana's song, uh, my presentation will answer the main problem. Are we Filipinos keeping our island in our mind. And based on this problem, three questions are formulated. First, do we have the concept of a maritime nation? Second, does this concept sink in or sink into our consciousness? And lastly, does this concept successfully transmute to concrete things such as maritime doctrine, among others. So the flow of my discussion, first, as uh, if you try to uh, make use or summarize the questions, it looks um, at the concept of a maritime nation, and if this fact sinks in into the Philippine consciousness, and moreover, it will explore the possibility of uh, maritime doctrine covering comprehensively not only on the spectrum of peace, security, and stability, but also blue growth for a green future. So how do we define a maritime nation? I tried to check this, and I underestimate the title, because there's a dearth of definition about the concept. The only available Definition is a stop in an online source, and to some extent this source is highly questionable, which defines maritime nation as any nation which borders the sea and is dependent on its use for majority of the following state activities, be it in commerce and transport, war, or even to define a territorial boundary, or for any maritime activity, activities using the sea to convey or produce an end result. The stop is also mentioned about the use of the term in the history to refer to talasocracy, meaning kratting, talas, uh, talasoc means to rule, and of course the sea, to rule the sea. And a good example of that will be the Carthage and the Phoenicians. But during the medieval period, increasingly become associated with maritime republics of Venice, of Pisa, of Genoa, and Amalfi. So the latter is um, based on the work of uh, an Italian scholar, Benvenuti's Le Republic, Republic Marinari, or the Maritime Republic. So a closer look of the Benvenuti's uh, work he identified at least nine uh, elements for a polity to be considered as a maritime republic. It should be noted that the maritime republic was a coin uh, from the 19th century historiography, and these are the examples. I believe that um, using this particular frame uh, to be applied in contemporary times, almost all of the variables or their variants are still present in current times. Uh, 
if I try to revisit, for instance, the historical materials and documents, I found out that um, people, uh, even in the pre-colonial period, had this concept already or knowledge about or the recognition of a maritime or archipelagic nature of the Philippines. The said elements are undoubtedly of 19th century description uh, of a maritime nation, but many of these elements are observably applicable to contemporary times. The case of the Philippines reflects uh, on the elements, but the concept may even cover the most obvious marker, the geographical nature of the country. So looking at the documents uh, written during the pre-colonial times, and I discovered this uh, from the work of K. M. Panikar, considering that my specialization is India, and um, the Philippines appeared to be a maritime polity. Such geographical condition is notably observed by early sailors and traders, and is reflected in the various Chinese and Indian annals and um, Indian documents. In particular, Early Indians, um, uh, traders, and geographers made reference to the Philippines, to early Philippines as Panyupayana, simply known as the land or land surrounded by waters. And I use this uh, in most instances to refer to the ancient Philippines before the pre-Islamic Philippines. Uh, this is quite interesting map of Greater India, which include um, the, which likely found in the Indian literature by uh, Ki M. Panikar. So remarkably, the Indian uh, ge uh, geographers referred to the Philippines as the land surrounded by water, and given this preference from the Indians, it's just reinforcing contemporary understanding of the geographic nature of the Philippines as a Samaritan nation. Aside from that, there are also documents provided uh, by the Chinese, like the Song Shi of 972. Now, what's the problem? The Philippines is definitely undeniably a maritime nation, being an archipelago with 7,641 islands, regardless of whether it's low tide or high tide. The country is facing all sorts of ocean-related opportunities and challenges for decades. This maritime nature, however, was and is not apparently complemented most of the time by the collective actions, actuations, and activities of the Philippine government and its apparatuses. There is no doubt that the Philippines is a maritime nation because of its geographical nature. However, as Maritus, uh, Marites uh, Vito uh, has observed, this fact has yet to sink into our country's consciousness. Though I know that we have a maritime colleges and institutions, uh, our fishermen, uh, fisher folks rather, are conscious about it, or but these are done individually rather than as a collective uh, notion. So there is a need, therefore, of retooling of conventional mindsets that focus on land and internal threats. She further laments that we don't hear our leaders talk about the Philippines as a maritime nation. And this uh, not sinking in should not be misconstrued, however, as a total absence of mechanism to forward the interests of the Philippines as a maritime nation. If you try to look, for instance, the mechanisms, um, prior to the constitutions of 1973, um, the constitutions of 1899, 1935, and 1943 uh, did not mention about the territory, specifically the Philippines, as a maritime entity. It was only in 1973 where the constitution mentions about, um, under Section 1, that a clear description of a national territory has been made. And here are the um, stipulations. Similarly, after uh, in 1987, and it says about you know, waters around, between, and connecting the islands of the archipelago. So I will not deal with this. Uh, you can uh, check later on the uh, 
uh, stipulations or the statements in various uh, in the two constitutions provided. Now, what are the agencies? As mentioned, I think I missed some of those uh, right now. But uh, technically, we have uh, various agencies or institutions, uh, government institutions, that uh, somehow complement the kind, the, the interest, and uh, the need to uh, work as, uh, as a maritime uh, entity. So we have the DND, the DFA, the AFP, particularly the Navy, Department of Interior and Local Government, Philippine Coast Guard, Marita, Marina, and so forth and so on. In terms of policies, um, I was just surprised that the past and present administrations have issued various proclamations to protect the maritime and marine interests of the country. These proclamations, however, are done on a piecemeal basis and do not constitute an act in unison to the general trajectory or even to a vision, if there is, of a maritime nation. Nonetheless, uh, these proclamations are better than nothing uh, since they have to extend, you know, to serve their purpose for a certain period of time and, of course, a certain period of interest. And foremost is the Proclamation 176, a series of 1963, and it declared the third week of October of every year as the Fish Conservation Week to promote the importance of the sea, or rather of the fish and other aquatic products to the people's well-being and the country's economy. In 1994, recognizing the um, importance of the archipelagic and maritime nature of the Philippines, then President Fidel V. Ramos issued the National Marine Policy to guide various stakeholders in the maritime uh, community, especially those in uh, government in managing this what we call as the blue economy. I'd, I'm interested to go further on this, but due to a um, short period of time, maybe we can talk about this uh, in an open forum later on. So, the NMP contains four key areas. Politics and jurisdiction, area regulation and enforcement, area development and conservation, and maritime security. Although brief of a legal mandate, the national marine uh, policy is a consonance with the national interest. After that, we have the Proclamation 866 of series of 1996, as amended, declared the last Friday of September of every year as the National Maritime Day for the purpose of focusing the public's attention on the vital role of the maritime industry in development in global shipping. Then we have in 2003, Proclamation Number 470 declared the third sat Saturday of September as every year, of every year rather, as the International Coastal Cleanup Day to remind and reawaken the Filipino vigilance in support of the continuing crusade against the debris crisis all over the world. And in 2017, we have the proclamation number 316, declaring the, again the month of September of every year as the Maritime and Archipelagic Nation Awareness Month, or what we call as MANAMO. This instrument also harmonizes, integrates, and synthesizes, or synchronizes, programs and activities that will raise national consciousness on maritime and strategic issues and policies. And only this May of 2018, we have the National Security Strategy, and I'm going to discuss a little bit of that. But the question is, is it necessary to have a maritime doctrine? And I checked the preliminary survey of countries having um, this, uh, what we call as maritime doctrine. So far, we have South Africa, and then India in 2009. Australia, uh, UK in 2011, I think, I'm tempted to use the word rather than maritime doctrine to maritime power because uh, UK in 2017 changed it from maritime doctrine to maritime power and we are not yet a power. So uh, the case I think we can still settle on maritime doctrine. 
And then uh, I put question mark because even Pakistan has that maritime doctrine. Russia in 2017 and Indonesia with that maritime hub and maritime uh, exchange in 2014. So, what is a maritime doctrine? Usually, a maritime doctrine is part of the military calculations. <coughs> But I won't settle that as simply part of the military doctrine, considering that there are so many things that should be considered uh, in the case of the Philippines. It's not just a matter of national security, it's also an economic security and even a food security. So the definition is recognizes the inherent joint nature of maritime operations and the fact that these operations are of use only so far as they can affect the course of a campaign, whether directly or indirectly. And this is actually from a military calculation perspective. The Philippines has attempted, as I mentioned, in 1994 with its national marine policy to be put in place. Unfortunately, it did not somehow reach to its successful stage uh, because of so many challenges, including political. Um, as I mentioned, there are four uh, areas of uh, concern or areas of development. Uh, briefly, politics and jurisdiction, it, it focuses in terms of the new baseline law of 2009, incorporating the areas defined by the PD 1596, including the Kalayan Island Group, and the PD 1599, which is the economic zone. Establish our national identity as an archipelagic state and define our uh, maritime boundaries in accordance with the UN Council of the Law and the Sea. On the other one, other hand, we have the area regulation and enforcement, which is actually focusing on the protection of mar marine ecology and also on integration and coordination, which are actually very central in terms of regulating and enforcing various issuances as regards to the use of maritime zones and resources. The third one is on the area development and conservation, and the priority is the management of the marine economy and technology to balance demands for utilization and conservation. And this involves actually DNR, PPA, PCG, and marina. In terms of maritime security, uh, I think we see the recent acquisition of naval, air force, and coast guard platforms to strengthen the country's ability to confront uh, low intensity conflicts and we're trying try to move to that. There's anyway an improvement. So what are the current or what is the current initiative? I think we can see the national security strategy that was uh, crafted and released uh, last May of 2018 and the document has recognized the importance of the Philippines as a maritime nation and perhaps the public document or the perhaps the first uh, public document that clearly state that the Philippines is not just a maritime nation, but trying to be a great maritime nation. So here it states, states that uh, Philippines archipelagic attributes and geographic location are both a source of strength and vulnerability. For most indications, the Philippines can indeed become a great maritime nation. So among archipelagos in the world, the Philippines is a unique one for the contiguity with which its islands, islets, and other marine features are clustered together. So I'll just put, uh, given the limited time, uh, hi I highlighted that although I acknowledge that these are um, overlapping, uh, related, interconnected, but there is a specific line there saying uh, ensure maritime and airspace security. And in terms of the features of strategic actions, you notice, for instance, the focus also in terms of maritime protection, particularly the harmonization of agencies' capability, uh, legal and funding requirements relative to this uh, particular concern, Establish comprehensive and integrated databases. Um, 
for planning and decision making and promote maritime domain awareness. Uh, I have a few minutes, so I'll proceed to conclusion. The Philippines is a mar maritime entity. Despite such uh, recognition, the government apparatuses are not working in unison. I think this is um, maybe a biased observation uh, to behave at least like a maritime nation. Uh, some agencies have embraced some mechanisms leading to such uh, thinking, but it did not reach to the point where all stakeholders are rowing together in unison as a maritime state. In the discussion, there were attempts from the past leaders of developing policies towards the realization of a maritime nation, but uh, I think they fall short of a develop of developing policies Towards the, re towards the realization of a real maritime nation and even of a maritime doctrine. Uh, perhaps the maritime doctrine uh, as a framework will bring the country with a clear trajectory or the direction, not only as a maritime power or a maritime entity, but also in the development of a holistic projection of a maritime and Mar uh, marine and maritime resources uh, and the political entity. So to be a maritime nation, we must exhibit that level of confidence on our ability to achieve national objectives by harvesting the rich marine resources and optimizing the benefits that the seas provide. Um, mobilizing the country's maritime attributes must at all times be pursued with determination, with as much depend on, on this for the country to progress. It is just simply telling the world, we are one nation despite the vast waters separating the islands because we are united in our desire to rally every Filipino in making the Philippines a maritime nation. It is making every Filipino aware of how the maritime industry, including the um, um, shipping industry, uh, influence or impacts the day-to-day -day life. It is recognizing the role of the maritime industry as one of the country's economic backbones by adopting a very clear national maritime policy. So the question is it necessary and, develop, and to develop and embrace a maritime doctrine? The answer is a big yes. It is very important that the Philippine as an, uh, Philippines as an archipelago should have a concrete platform where all its agencies are interlinked and guided in order to move forward in coherence with the national interest. The maritime doctrine is imperative or is necessary in order to guide the various agencies of the government to work in the protection or for the protection of our sovereignty and also for the preservation of our natural resources. Stakeholders must be engaged and their inputs solicited in the review of maritime institutions, uh, legislations, regulations, and policies. In the, by this, the government must lead by adopting a comprehensive maritime national uh, maritime policy that defines the long-term strategic direction for maritime Philippines. So the absence of such document or even a delay of such document in the long run is already a clear lapse on the part of the government given the vivid recognition of its geographical configuration yet continue to deny the presence of a doctrine that will guide its path as a maritime nation. Please take note that I'm looking here at a half full glass perspective rather than a half empty glass perspective. Having or crafting a doctrine for such purpose will spare the Philippines from such embarrassment to be guided among maritime nations without having its own maritime doctrine. In the spirit of fairness, the current government is more serious about the maritime nation, and despite the token move, the uh, Duterte administration has declared since 2017 the month of September as the Maritime Manamo, no? Maritime and Archipelagic Nation Awareness Month. 
While this is a welcome step, we need institutional measures that will leave a lasting effect on the public consciousness, starting with the early learning subjects that will make the young aware of the seas around us, even towards uh, teaching our uh, students uh, as a better sailors and seafarers. The riches they offer and experience is first hand. Our leaders too have to elevate the national discourse and share their vision about the Philippines and its place in the region as a maritime country. Only by doing, only then that we'll be able to proudly sing with Moana. We keep our island in our mind and when it's time to find home, we know the way. This also reminds me of our sailors and maritime professionals and our overseas workers and diaspora that despite the distance of their work, home away from their uh, work, uh, home away from, a very, uh, separated by waters, in the long run, they will find their way to find home. They know the way to find the maritime nation called the Philippines. So with that, maraming salamat po. Many thanks to the museum, Marikina, the Asian Institute of Maritime Studies.